Okay, I'm back with another review, and today we are having a look at the LNER Class 04 rod, which is made by Batman, as you can see. Now, I have not looked at this model yet, and so now it's her time to shine on the Class 47 Peter channel. And even though I haven't looked at this model yet, I just know that this is going to be a stunning model, because I've seen pictures of them, and they just look immense. And I don't think I'm going to be wrong when I look at it in detail. Now there is quite a bit of history on the Class 04, the LNER Class 04 I should say, because interestingly it did not start off as a Class 04. Originally it was the Great Central Railway 8K class. And these were all designed by John G. Robinson and they were built at Gorton Works. Kitten and Co. and the North British Locomotive Company. They were built between 1911 and 1914 and the, they built several of these types of locos actually. The 8Ks had 126 built. The 8M, which was a similar class to this basically, had 19 built and the Rod 280s had 521 built. They were nicknamed Rods because they were part of the Railway Operating Division during World War One, and Railway Operating Division is short for rod basically so that's where the nickname came from. The LNER purchased 131 of these 8Ks and 8Ms under the LNER ownership. The 8Ks became the L4s as you can see here and the, 8A and the 8Ms became the L5s. So this originally was an 8K but when the LNER came and bought it it became the L4. Um, and only one of the 8Ks slash 04s survives, and it's number 63601 on the Great Central Rail, which is currently, at the time of filming this video and upload, it's out of service for an overhaul. There are three other rods that are preserved, but they're not as Great Central Railway locomotives or LNER rods, and I wish that crow would shut up. Uh, the other three rods, they're preserved abroad basically and they never worked with the Great Central Railway or the LNER basically but either way so let's get this model open and see what she's like so just take the box cover off it's the usual new Batman packaging uh, the brief history on the back we don't need to go through that because I've just given you a history lesson on this loco already so put that to one side then we'll take out the plastic case and then that goes to one side and then it's all the paperwork basically oh well for starters what's this ah yes it's a quality control like I had with the Thompson class 01 which this also came from the Hereford model center and it's just to say that this model was was tested before being dispatched basically which is good because we don't want to receive broken models. And then in here, it's all, all the other usual stuff. Such as the instructions for the Robinson Class 04, the first and only for them. It also shows how to stick the detail on. How to connect the tender and all that lark, so I'll put that in the instructions folder later. Then here you have, ah uh, yes, we've got the collector club flyer here. Which to be fair I don't really need that. So that goes in the bin. So I don't do the Batman Collectors Club. I used to, but not anymore. And then that's just the guarantee. Okay, so I'll bring this back into shot and we'll take off the plastic case. And we can get to the details now. Which is the brake pipes, or vacuum pipes if you want to call them that. It's up to you. Um, drain cocks, what do you believe they are? Yep, they are drain cocks. A chain link coupling, or two for the front and the back. And that's pretty much it, to be honest. So I'll put those to one side, ready to be put on later. And 
Speaking of detail parts, the ones to the flying pig and the Thompson O1 have disappeared somewhere, so I'll have to look for those. But either way, we can take off the top of the plastic case and then we can just lift out the model. I'll put the clip back on, and then we can put that to one side. Now the local and the tender, as usual, they are connected. So I'm going to disconnect the tender from the loco so we can have a look at the loco in detail properly. So I'll be back in a second. Right, well I'm back and the rod is in the loco cradle and it doesn't look like the tender can be detached from the loco from my point of view. That is because there's actually a circuit board here. Just on the chassis there. Now the, the brake rods on the tender and the loco have already been added. Not by me. They've been factory fitted. Uh, there's no wire and plug socket on this model. What you do get instead is that drawbar connector but there's also wires attached to the tender as well and that is where that circuit board is because the wires are under there. And I don't think the circuit board can be removed. I'll have to do some research on this on the computer but without doing that to see if it can be removed, which I don't know if it will be able to, I would rather do the research to find out if it can be, because otherwise I might end up damaging the model, and I don't want that. So, I'll be back in a second. Right, well I can't find anything on the internet, but the instructions is quite intriguing, um, because it doesn't mention anything about, well, disconnecting the tender, but it does mention about tender removal, removing the four screws indicated, but that's to fit the DCC chip which is actually in the tender. Well, the DCC socket, should I say, is in the tender. Um, interestingly though, despite it not saying anything on there, <coughs> it shows you here in the drawings that the chassis from the tender there is actually not connected up to that bit there for the loco. So there has to be some way of removing the tender. The question is, how? It says about running in for a one hour in each direction at moderate speed, so I will do that of course, because I do it with all my other models. So yeah, this might not be easy to remove the tender. In fact, it could be impossible. So I'm going to have to see about if I can possibly remove the that little circuit board type of thing there. Well, it's not. Well, it resembles a circuit board, but it resembles one of them pins that you take out that you kind of do with DCC ready locos, basically. You know what I mean? When you take it out of the tender or loco and you put a chip in, it looks like one of them only smaller, but I don't know if it's going to be removable. And like I say, the right rod there. Being factory fitted, looks like it's not going to be easy. So, it might not be removable after all. Unless I can take the bright rod out. Oh, yeah, that's just come off. Um, well, it's broke off actually that, but it doesn't matter because glue will cover that up, so... Just give me a moment, I'll turn the camera off and I'll come back to you to see if it can be removed. Right, I'm back again and... It turns out that I don't really think that the tender can be con disconnected from a loco, and it doesn't look very easy to do either because that little circuit board thing connects to the plugs. It does come out as I tried, but then I think it means taking the tender apart, like taking out the chassis, and I'm not going to bother doing that because like the 
well, let's just say the wires are connected to some sort of screw or some sort, or it's connected to the part of the tender that has to be removed from it. So I just didn't bother. And that is a bit of a disappointment, because I would have thought by now, Batman would have made tender connections less sophisticated. I would have thought they'd have done the wires and the plug socket thing, like Hornby do now, and what Batman have done for most of their other models. It's not a massive flaw against the model, because I'm sure the locomotive's detail, running performance, and strength will hopefully make up for that, but that's still a bit, a, that's still a bit of a shame, to be honest. So it means I'm going to have to hold the loco and the tender at the same time. So you will have to bear with me on that. Well, see, either way, let's get cracking. Okay, so... You will have to bear with me on this, because this is not going to be easy. Far from it, actually. It's going to be a bit hard. So, where do we begin? Well, first of all, there's the weight to talk about. It is heavy. Well, the loco is. The tender, there's not much weight in the tender, but then, you know, it's more important in the loco, to be honest, because without the weight, this loco would not really be able to pull anything. And so then it would be useless practically, so that's why the weight is important. It's a 280, as you can see there, because there's two wheels at the front. And there's four in the middle. And there's none at the back, so it's a 280 freight locomotive. Anything that's got a wheel arrangement, the 280, then you know it's going to be a freight locomotive, of course. The lettering on the tender and the numbering on the cab, just look at the embossed on that. It's just so accurate. And they've got the right printing as well. Because years ago, mainly with Hornby models, the embossed on the printing, it wasn't that good. But nowadays, it's just much more accurate. So, of course, they've got that right, which is spot on. And you can also feel the raised lettering on that as well, which is nice. Um, there is some dust, some slight dust anyway, on the tender there. The livery is spot on, as you can see, they've got the correct shade of black, which is what we want, because you wouldn't want it BR black and then the L and the R lettering on it or something like that. So they've got the L and the R black, spot on, which is good. They've got the cylinders here, which are nice, and the drain cocks, they fit under them, as you can see there's two small holes there. And there's the valve gear and the link motion, you've even got a cab step there as well. Well, sorry, just, that's just a normal step. That's not a cab step. That's a cab step. So do excuse that slight mistake. But just look at the link motion there and the valve gear. Look how it's all connected up. I can't wait to see that moving round. The wheels are nice as well. And you've got the sand pipes there. And, of course, there's the brake rod. That's already been factory fitted. There's even some slight rivets there on the chassis. That's really good. Then you've got these metal handrails that come down the side of the cab there. There's rivets on the side of the cab and a small handrail. There's rivets on the cab roof as well, which is nice. You've got the turned brass whistle and safety valves and glazing in the cab windows like you want it. The cab roof, now, well, inside the cab interior, the under part of the cab roof and around the sides of the inside of the cab are painted cream. And you don't get that with many models, so that's a nice touch. And just look at the painted cab detail as well. You've got the speedometer that's painted silver, though in some models I've seen it painted red. But, you know, it, it is accurate with the Class 04 slash 8K class. You've got the turning wheels, the gauges and the dolls and the pipes. It's all there, painted. So that's really nice. And you've got the cab floor there, which is... It looks like it's made of wood. But I don't really know. But it's there and it's detailed and painted and it looks nice. You've got the handle there to transfer the, wa the water from the tender to the boiler. Then that's the foot plate, of course, that folds down. Which is made of metal, which is nice. Then you've got that curious detail there, like you did with the Thompson 01 from Hornby. I don't know what it is, but it's there and it's put on separately and it looks nice. There's rivets on the tender buffer beam and the storage cabinets inside the tender. Then there's the detail on the underframe of the tender. You've got the springs and the axle boxes, which is there, and there's some rivets on the frame, which is nice. 
The couplings, yes, now the couplings they are removable. At the front there's a NEM socket and on the tender it has a dovetail or pigeon can tail. Coupling basically. Yeah, there are some holes under the tender, that's for a speaker if you wish to fit sound. Then there's a, as you can see, that's the hole for the chattening coupling to go into, and there's a hole on the other side for the bright pipe. There's handrails down the back of the tender there, as well as a few lamp irons, which is nice. You've also got sprung buffers, so those, so those that like the sprung buffers will be very happy. And they are metal as well. The, the ones on the back, on the tender, they are round, and the ones at the front are oval, so that is accurate. So that's like with the Thompson 01. So clearly, that is accurate then. There's even a lamp iron at the top of the tender there, and that's the water filler cap. There's some rivets on the top there as well, as you can see, which is nice. The sprung buffers on the front, being the other ones, they are made of plastic and not metal. But, you know, at least they're still sprung, so, again, those that like sprung buffers, it'll make you happy. And besides, I don't mind if they're made of plastic, at least there are some buffers on the front. There's rivets on the buffer beam as well, and there's already, interestingly, there's already a vacuum pipe on the front, which is interesting. That's the hole for the chaining coupling to go into, and the running number, 6190, is on the front there, printed, which is nice. There's lamp irons on the running board. You've got a nice dome at the top there. And there's the chimney. You could fit a smoke generator unit in there, but I'm not going to bother. There's rivets around the smoke box, as you can see. And there's even some rivets on the running board as well. And just look at this detail here, like that small turning wheel. And this detail there. And I do like this big wheel splasher there over those three big driving wheels. That looks really distinctive. And that's a builder's plate there, as you can see on the side. There's even some rivets on the running board as well. There's also some small rivets on the boiler on this part here. Fine metal handrails that I put on separately that go down alongside the boiler and round the front, which is a nice touch. There's a lamp iron on the smoke box door and there's even rivets under that as well and that is the smoke box door dart the pin dart basically which you don't get with many models but on this one you do and that's really nice I'm not sure the smoke box door opens it doesn't necessarily need to but there's only one way to find out to be honest so I'll be back in a tick Right, I'm back, I've got a needle, and I'm going to try and pry open the smoke box door. Which I don't think it opens, but... It's the only way you're going to find out. And in this case, I think it's safe to say that it doesn't open. No, because let's face it, opening smart box door doors on any model, it's more of a luxury, really, to be honest. But then, like I said, it doesn't really need to open. Because you're not going to have the smart box door open all the time anyway, to be honest. Um, but anyway, back to the detail. Well, as you can see... You've got this nice detail under the smoke box door, as you can see there. Which, of course, I am referring to that detail there, as you can see. Just getting right in close on that. That looks really nice. As you can see, sorry for the giant finger, but I'll, it's that detail there. And that looks really nice. You know, the effect on that looks really good. You've got another step there, as you can see, just by the valve gear. That's the reversing lever. You've got some pipe work down on that side of the boiler, and again, you've got the metal hand roll that's put on separately. You've got more rivets. And I do like how you can see under the boiler there, as you can see. That looks really nice. Another builder's plate. Another hand rail, as you can see there, just on the side of the cab, and some more rivets. And the accurate lettering and numbering, of course. 
And again, the metal hand drill that comes down the side of the cab, that's a nice touch. And you don't get that with many models. And that's more or less it, I guess. And on the buffer beam there on the loco, there's some rivets there as well. I mentioned that on the tender, but not on the loco. But to be fair, I've only just noticed it. One thing we haven't yet talked about. Right, sorry about that then. The camera battery did a big number on me, and so I had to go and charge the battery up. But then the SD card got full, and so I had to get the footage off that. Sorry about the rain coming down. That can't really be helped. Um, but as I was saying, one thing we haven't yet talked about is the coal being removable, which it is. And so I've got this needle here to get it out. And out it comes, like so. Oh yes, one other thing I haven't talked about yet is the detail on the side of the tender. These hand rolls at the side of the tender, there's rivets on them, as you can see, and then they are, and they are put on separately. But anyway, so now this coal load, it is actually a weight it's made of metal so it is a bit heavy um, but I really don't know why they've done that to be honest um, it's not the first time I've seen coal loads being made of metal this is not something Hornby does but Batman does it for some reason they did it with the 4F Fowler and they also did a similar thing with the Class D11 except in that case the coal was just metal and wasn't really a weight but if you're going to add weight in the tender put it inside the tender and not on the top because that's just a bit silly to be honest, so you know, so if you're gonna, I mean, the first thing is this coal load. Well, it doesn't look that authentic, to be honest. I mean, it's shiny. I suppose if you didn't want to add real coal in it, you could just put matte varnish on it to not make it a shiny. Well, I've just dropped it, but then even so. Well, to be honest, if you just pop it back in, this is wrong, you know, there we are, put it back in, well, actually it's hard to put back in compared to being taken out. Ah yes, there we go, I it in the wrong way. Um, it is there to add a bit of weight. But again, if you're going to do that, then why can't you just put it in the tender? I know that's where the chip goes in, but what's stopping them put the weight in the tender? So that creates a bit of a problem in its own right when adding real coal. So in this case, I'm going to have to scatter the real stuff over the top of it. But, you know, it's removable, at least, so I do give them credit for that. But it would have been nice if they had weight in the tender and not on the top to make it disguise as a coal load. Um, but that's about it for detail, to be honest. Now let's get her on the tracks and see how she runs. We've seen her in detail, and it's a stunning model. So now we need to see what the running performance is like. And there's only one way to find out, and that's runner, basically. Right, so here we are at the track, or the layout rather, and we're going to put the rod onto the tracks. Just to keep the joints hanging, they're not getting in the way. Okay, so she's on the track. We'll give her a wiggle. Oh yeah, look at that. Smooth mechanism. So let's get her going. Okay, well bear in mind that it's not the fastest speed to run this loco at, but then again, this is a freight loco, so it's not really designed to bolt around at 100 miles per hour. Just look at that link motion moving. 
But yeah, as I said earlier, she's a smooth runner. There's no grinding noises or jerky movement, which is what you don't want. But yeah, she's drop dead gorgeous. So there she goes, under the bridge, over the crossing and through the tunnel. And she will appear at the other end. So she's passing the mineral wagons with real slides in them, in the siding, passing the traction engine, passing the level crossing and passing the station where all the passengers are waiting to catch the next train. where it's going, that train, well I'll leave it to your imagination. Passing the seaside that, yes it still needs diesel on it and I know I keep saying it and I've yet to do it but trust me I will do it eventually. That's a promise. And then she's approaching the shed where the, as you can see there's a railway children pannier on shed and I've removed the front coupling. There's the LNER Thompson 01 which is actually a rebuilt of the 8K class. In fact, I'm going to get the LNER 04 double heading with the Thompson 01 in a separate video pulling a long train. How about that? That sounds like a plan. And there's the flying pig which has had its cab interior painted which you saw in the how to video on painting cab interiors. And then there's Silver Fox. It still needs the detail and real coal put in but I will get to that. But it won't be in the video. And you saw that in the how to video on renumbering and renaming logos. But yeah, so before we get this loco coupled up to a train, we will get some close up shots of her. Besides, before she's going to pull a train anyway, she's going to be running backwards for an hour. But that won't be on film. So now we're going to get the LNER Robinson 04 pulling the rake of 11 mineral wagons which as you all know are filled with real slate. One thing I am going to point out is that since you last saw these which of course was in the review of the Thompson 01 from Hornby which of course is just over there as you can see I have since corrected the slate loads in the wagons because before, it was just bits of slate broke up, glued into the wagons. So the wagons were heavy and there was the chance that locomotives, should they go around bends, they would struggle. And then there was the risk of straining to the motors and burning them out, which I would not want to happen. So I decided to do it more professionally. I took the slate out, measured cardboard to the length of the wagons, glued it into the wagons and then just sprinkled the slate on the top which not only does it look much better but the wagons are also lighter so locomotives should be able to cope hauling this rake without struggling around the bends in which I have already got this or should I say I've already had this locomotive off camera running around the lads with this rake of wagons 
and she hasn't struggled around bends at all. But it's all about the care of the locos, really. And I am, or should I say, I'm planning to delete the video I did on adding the slates in wagons and doing it better, like how to do it properly. But we'll see. I might not even do it with slates. I might do coal or something. Although I might just buy one more wagon or two, perhaps, and do what I did with these, basically, but we'll see. But it is a possibility that I'm thinking of doing. Do you excuse the light here, though? Um, I've got the heater on, because it was a bit cold in here. So that's just explaining that. Right, but anyway, enough of my jibber-jabber. Let's get this loco point pulling. So you can see what she can do. Look at that, she can pull them with ease. And she's not timid or afraid. She just gets the job done. Okay, so she's going around the first bend. No problems around there. I do like the sound of the wagons when they go over the rail joints. It makes the train sound realistic. She's going around the next bend with no problems. Let's zoom in close on that link motion again. Look at that. And then she's just going around the next bend, which of course is through the tunnel. And then it's the next bend, which is just there, from the outside of the tunnel. Look at that. She hasn't stalled round the bend and she hasn't stalled on the track. And given there is a slight incline on there, she's done really well. She's managed to get up there without any problems. Which is what you want really, not just for a freight loco, but you wouldn't want this locomotive to struggle. Let's get her going a little bit faster, shall we? I know these don't bolt round at 100 miles per hour. But then we don't want it to go too slow either. So I think that speed will just about do it. She's a fantastic model. So now I'm going to get some close up shots of her. Well, I don't know if you saw it then, but some sparks came off some of those wheels then. Don't know if that was caught on camera.
And for the final conclusion, well, the proof is in the pudding. This model is a bang for the book. Seriously, because you've seen in this video just what you get. You not only have stunning detail, you've also got excellent running quality and the strength as well. I mean, she's more than capable of pulling long trains, but that's what you want really for a freight like her. And bear in mind, these wagons are full with real slaves. And she manages really well. And if you haven't yet got one of these models, then get one. I don't know why it took me so long to get one of these really, to be honest. Because they are just stunning models, whatever livery you get them. Because you've got to have freight locomotives in your collection. Because they make your collection interesting. As opposed to just having passenger and express locomotives. And she will serve to be an important asset for the railway. But then again, all my models are important. Batman, if you're watching this, well done. You own yourself to a win here.